I'd like to welcome everyone to today's episode of Truth, the Reality Under the Headline. Today we have a special guest. We have Tony Perez. He's a Chief Warrant Officer too. He's an American soldier, defense contractor, and he's the author of you know, the couple books. He actually has the James Chase novels, Doris, in, in sequence, and it's kind of a reflection of you know his history in the military, the actual you know combat action he's seen, and kind of taken you know what he experienced and has it into a, a novel for you know others to kind of witness and enjoy a different storyline. Mr. Perez, welcome today. Thank you. Thank you for having me over. Always, always. And if you kind of want to give, you know, the audience a briefing as far as the, you know, initially, I mean, you have a phenomenal career in the military. What led for you to join the military? Was it family or was it just something that, you know, you always had a passion about doing? Um, you know, I was, uh, I was in high school and... I didn't have any direction, um, any direction on where I needed to go in life. And uh, I ran into a recruiter. It was an Army recruiter. And he spoke to me about the military. And I was, I was, inter- I was really interested. And he uh, brought me over to the recruiting station, showed me some videos. And that's what did it. I I knew then that the Army uh, was going to be where I was going to go right after graduating high school. And so that's that's what I did. That was going to that was going to be my next question to you is if you knew which branch was kind of your forte as far as, you know, what you wanted to go into and everything else, too. So and, and initially when you made that decision, did you? plan it for it to be a career or was it something that you kind of wanted to do your four years and get out or, you know, how did it start? So, um, I was 17 when I graduated, so I was too young to join, uh, by myself. I had to actually convince my mom. And so that was a little bit of a challenge. And, uh, I took the ASVAB and I did really well on the ASVAB and, um, it printed out everything that I could do in the army with those ASVAB scores. And I took it to my mom and I said, Hey, uh, mom, this is what I want to do. And I want to go in the army and I want to go infantry, special forces, the whole nine yards. And she was like, "Mm, I don't think so. And I was like, why not? I mean, I'm, I'm ready to go. And she said that if I'm going to go in the military, that I need to go into a field that I can cross over to the civilian side and something that I can do on the civilian side and, and killing people is not one of them. So uh, I, I gave the sheet with everything that I could do to my mom. I said, uh, uh, everything I can do in the army. And I gave it to my mom and I said, uh, you pick. And so she looked at it and she looked at it. She was a quartermaster, truck driver. Um, and then she saw something and she pointed at it and she said, if you do this, I'll sign the papers tomorrow. And I was like, okay, what is this that you want me to do, mom? And she said, right here, my son, the dentist, and it was a dental assistant, dental specialist. I said, mom, that's the dental assistant. That's not the dentist. And uh, she said, I don't care. You do that. And uh, that's, I'll sign the papers. And I I told the recruiter the next day, I said, hey, you know what? I'm ready to go. Uh, I may not be going infantry, special forces and all that, but I'm still going. And this is what uh, I need to do. And this is what it needs to say on the enlistment papers is to be a dental specialist. And he says, okay. He put it in there. And a couple of days later, my mom signed it. And I was going in the army as a dental specialist. Kind of crazy. Well, it is too. And that's, again, that's why 
I ask that question because it's all it's all about the influence. You know, like my, myself when I went into the Marines and you know initially went to sign to the Navy, but it was because the lack of family. So you know, my reason in going in was to establish that you just said as far as like, some form of direction. I wanted to have that camaraderie. I wanted to have a family of a sense. You know, so we all have that reason, and it's awesome that. You know, I mean, it's kind of two sided that, you know, you kind of, you know, gave that to mom. Like, hey, you, okay, well, you find something for me because this is like a decision that I want to make. And it, it makes it nice that it actually came into that cohesion right there to where, hey, look, okay, well, this is how I feel comfortable. Okay, well, you know, as long as we can find that comfort zone, you know, it kind of makes it worthwhile, you know? Yeah, yes. And I understand. And, and the funny thing is, is I did four years as a, uh, dental specialist in the army and I ended up leaving the army and make a long story short uh, I got into the Coast Guard as a port security specialist I did that for nine years and then I went um, from there uh, I went to back to the army army reserves and I became a CID special agent and I've been a CID special agent for uh, 12 years now. Was, was that your bread and butter or was that something that kind of was just like it fit at the time? You know what I mean? I mean, it's all the. Well, it, so I did it as um, I did the active duty portion. Then I went reserves and I did um the coast guard in the reserves and i did uh army cid special uh special agent uh in the reserves and active duty i had both with being a, a special agent and um the i would say the bread and butter was um my civilian career where i was in law enforcement for 18 years Thank you. and i earned my uh, bachelor's degree and public administration from Barry University. And then a few months later, I went ahead and I applied um, to Florida Tech and I got accepted into the master's program in cybersecurity. And I completed the master's program from Florida Tech in cybersecurity. And it was soon after I finished that, I was activated um, by the uh, army to do a uh, year up in DC, Virginia as a uh, CID special agent. And I was on the SecDef's uh, protection detail. Awesome. What did you, so, you know, having the taste of, you know, both of those careers, did you, I mean, what made you more comfortable? I mean, do you still kind of, you know, like the civilian sector law enforcement or do you prefer like the military sector? Uh, so kind of initially I thought, initially I thought that the civilian law enforcement, um, was better, uh, and it kind of prepared me more for, uh, being a CID special agent, uh, in the ways of doing investigations. Um, uh, as a CID special agent, we have two jobs. And one of them is criminal investigations, and the second one's executive protection. And doing the executive protection, I, I couldn't have gotten that training and experience anywhere else except maybe the Secret Service um, for for what I was doing uh, and protecting the SecDef. And it happened to be uh, General Mattis, who was when he was a SecDef, is when I was over there uh, oh, wow. his, on his uh, protection detail. And it, it was it was unique. It, it was very unique. Uh, I really enjoyed the um, working on uh, his protection detail. Uh, he was very down to earth. Uh, he was a very good person at heart. Um, but when it came time to uh, do business, he was very straightforward and, and knew what needed to be done. Very, very fierce. Watched all he was is <laughs> yes, very and, and very good at his job. He was he he I would say is a very well read 
uh, master tactician. Uh, he's very, very smart. You know, and going under his command, though, you know, as well, too, just like with anything in life, you know, we're only going to be as good as the company we keep, you know, and, you know, following under direction and guide of, you know, someone of Mathis's, you know, credential, power and influence. I mean, I can only imagine, you know, the benefits that you, you know, reap from that, as well as, you know, the brothers and sisters that serve with you, they reaped off of you as well. So yes, it was it was a uh, it was enjoyable and everybody on the team. <clears throat> really enjoyed working on his de on his detail. <clears throat> and then, so during, was there a aha moment that you knew that at some point you were going to put this in the print? You were going to tell a story someday, one way, whether it be the you know the James Chase novels or whether it was going to be the you know the <laughs> Chief Officer to, uh, Tony Perez novels. Did you know at some point you have an aha moment that this needs to be a print? I've just seen too much, you know, or. So, so I knew, and this is a funny story. Uh, I knew when I was 15 that I wanted to write a book and I, I wanted to do a series. Huh. And it was weird how it happened. Um, my mom, she's an avid reader. Uh, she would buy those thick Harlequin novel love stories. And she, I swear she can go through one book every two weeks. And so she had a whole bunch of, she had stacks of the Harlequin books uh, in her room. And one day uh, she handed me a book and I was like, here, Tony, you need to read this. I was like, no, I'm not reading any of the Harlequin stuff. That's, <laughs> um, that's all yours. She said, no, 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 you, this isn't one of my books. This is a different book, and I think you'll enjoy it. And so I, I took, I looked at it, and it was it was called Deathlands. And it was written by an author named James Axler. And I put it on my nightstand, and I left it there. And then one night I went to bed a little early. I picked it up, and I started uh, reading the first chapter and I got kind of hooked and I was like, well, what's going to happen next? And I finished that book, uh, and in about two to three weeks. And at the end, uh, I realized that there's, it's a series and there's, uh, part two, three, four, five. And I was like, we need to get the next book because it left on a cliffhanger. Yeah. And I needed to know what happened. And so I ended up getting um, these. I, I bought like 40 of those books over time <laughs> because I, I was hooked. And but anyway, that after the third or fourth one that I read when I was I was 15, I told my mom, I said, Mom, I'm going to write a book just like this. And she was, oh, OK, yeah, sure. All right. Here I am in my early 50s. And I finally uh, did what I said I was going to do. Well, you know, and what's nice about your books, too, is, you know, it's like I write, a, I dabble a little bit. I write, I write poetry and like, you know, columns and, you know, self-help journals, all that stuff. But it's like, you know, to put a feet on like the book aspect of it. I'm, I'm still trying to, I got a manuscript, but it's the, you know, putting it there. And it's the, you know, how readable your books are, you know, it's quick, it's capturing and, you know, it keeps people, you know, entailed to where kind of like there's a cliffhanger every chapter to where, okay, I have to turn the page. You know, it's not one of the ones where it's going to be like, okay, chapter, I can wait for chapter two. No, it's going to, hey, let me see what goes on here. You know, and it's, it was great about reading that is, you know, me growing up, I was always a Clive Cussler fan, you know, but it was like, I'm not going to say always, because when I first, I mean, his freaking books are like this, and it's like, I'm yeah. not reading that. Then I open it up and it's like fine print. I thought maybe it was this thick and it was going to be like, you know, double space, large font. No, you know, Clive Cussler's books are like this, but it's, it's encapsulating. As soon as you start reading, you just, you have to read some more. You have to read some more. And that's what's so great about, you know, your books, like with the Delta mission and things like that, to where, you know, it goes right in, you know, and it's just like with any kind of, you know, story hero, you want to, you want to know what their next mission is and things following out. And do you know, 
do you have a storyboard as far as how many more there are going to be in the future or is it kind of be the play by ear and story by story because I, I know that you know after your career you know in the military i'm sure you've had enough to have us a whole series of novels you know but i mean do you have a, a set series in mind or how is that like playing out in your mind right now or is it kind of be a so i i knew um i had two books in my head that i wanted to write and i was able to get those two done i, I did one one year and one the next year last year and uh you wrote I, them you wrote them in a year yeah i, I did oh, wow. so i did the dragon and the eagle uh last year and i started in january and i finished it in december um and then that, that was 2021 and then 2022 i did the delta mission and that one I, I started in january and i finished it in well it was a uh, august august september time frame and then how swiftly you're able to write these books and have the storyline play out as well as they do is it because of how much the james chase you know relates to yourself is that what makes it kind of i mean writing's never going to be easy but in this in this essence you know, if you're kind of just telling your own story and it's just a, a third person, basically, is that what kind of, does it help with the expediency of being able to create the novels, you know, get the novels into print, have it edited and all that other good stuff too? I mean, because that's a phenomenal time frame to actually be able to have, a, you know, books of that quality written that fast. So, um, so books one and two, I already had in my head and I already knew the storyline and how it was going to go. And um, I had an editor, uh, she did outstanding uh, editing the books and, and pointing out some things that, needed to, that I needed to correct and, and, or explain more. And uh, I got that done and, and she reviewed it again and it was great. And she, um, she really enjoyed the story. Well, she enjoyed both books uh, immensely. And, and then I went to design and then publishing and that was it. Um, I didn't have, I didn't have to spend a lot of time on the story as I already knew what, what I was going to write. Um, and you mentioned about, uh, being in my experience. Uh, so I was never, so for my first book, the Delta mission, I was never a Delta operator or anything like that, but, um, when I was in Afghanistan, uh, I was working, uh, it was called the Grayside Side Mission, and I was working as a CID special agent, and I was doing some, uh, I was working in Parwan, and I knew what the Delta guys were doing, and so I had that awareness, and what the CIA was doing there as well, and I wanted to put that that story, I, I thought it was a good story. I, I needed to put it in on paper. And so for this book, the first few chapters that discuss James Chase and his high school and, and uh, deciding to join the army, that was me. That was all me. Uh, except he didn't go uh, to become a dental specialist. He went Ranger and then Delta. Um, and then book two, it's, it's, book two is unique in a couple of ways. Um, I wrote this one and it was based off of um, my time up in DC, Virginia. Uh, I had the uh, extraordinary opportunity to be on Mattis's protection detail. And so I had full access to the Pentagon. Um, I could go anywhere because uh, wherever he could go, I'd have to go too. So I had full access and I did that. I, I walked around the Pentagon. I talked to people. I uh, met quite a few interesting people 
and I learned a lot. And I put some of that information on here. And it's this this book is getting a lot of attention because of what what I discussed in the book or and the story. When going through, like you know, in the Pentagon and even in Afghanistan, you know, we, you know, sometimes seeing it from the side or seeing it in third person, you know, a lot of times you can encapsulate more because a lot of times when we're in the moment or we're on a specific mission, a specific you know task ourselves. You know, we're kind of in that moment where we're not really, I'm not going to say capturing, but we're not really storing what we're seeing and what we're doing, opposed to when we have intent on watching others, storing what they're doing, and then kind of like in the journalistic aspect of everything. So, you know, in the Pentagon, were you kind of knowing that, hey, at some point I kind of want to use this to, you know, because that's like with movies, you know, that's, that's what a good, good, good producer does. That's what a good writer does. They want to get his, to make the story believable, you know, in, in more of a real sense. So, I mean, did you know that going in or was it something like, hey, I remember when I had this conversation with, you know, such and such at the Pentagon or wherever the case may be in Afghanistan. So was that part planned out or? No, no, it wasn't planned out at all. Um, you know, I originally... Uh, I was going to write a, a fiction novel on a kid that's got telekinesis and he was using his uh, ability for good and bad guys were after him. And, and I started with that and I, I didn't have, I wasn't planning on writing anything about the Pentagon or, or current events or future events, but um, I coordinated with another author and he told me after he read a little bit of uh, my first imagination, my first book of that kid with telekinesis, he said, you know, I, I know about you. I know your history. I, I know what you do. I would be more interested in what you know and what you've gone through instead of this book that you're writing now about this kid with telekinesis. And he said, you need to write about what you know. Are, are you like, idaic and a co or a coic by any chance? What's that? Are you idaic or a coic by any chance? Or no. You remember it? Like, it's like, you know, it's, you, know you, you see or what you hear, you know, it's like the muscle memory and things like that. Well, when you were saying before about how you just had it in your head and it was already there, you know, it's like, you know, sometimes when you, see things, hear things, it's automatic and it's already there and it's memorized where kind of like the book's already printed and the brain's way to do is just type it out or write it out. Well, I had, I had that information, but I, I didn't think about putting it on paper until I spoke to that writer, right. until he told me that he would be a hundred times more interested and what I actually did and my experiences as opposed to what I was writing at that time. Right. And, and that's why I was asking about the idaic or echoic, you know, to where is the being able like him, him providing you with that insight and you just being able to just grab it like, well, yeah, hey, I remember this conversation right here and boom, because it was just imprinted there. So that's why I was kind of, you know, curious about that to be able to, you know, just grab, I mean, because especially how vivid everything is. So, yeah, it, it was, I think that advice was really good and, and I took it and I ran with it uh, and it came out well. And, and that's how I was able to get it, two books out in two years. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. And so how much time do you have now as far as like the... Are you, are you wanting to do a book tour? I know you, 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 know, you set up shop outside, you know, some different like local venues and things like that to do the book signings and grace people with, you know, the autographed, you know, copies of the book and everything else too. Are you going to be doing a book tour? Is that something that you kind of, you look forward to doing or? Um, I don't think I would have time for a book tour. Um, I'm still working uh, at my, my, full-time job. I'm still doing the army reserve stuff. 
Um, so I'm pretty busy as it is. And I'm trying to work on book three. And that one, I can already see it's probably going to take a little longer than a year. But I'm giving it a shot. <laughs> Yeah, so, and that's what that's why I was asking about like the time because I know you you know you're still you know actively you know have your full time you know but uh is even though I mean I I even hate saying that it's a fiction yeah you know I mean because you know a lot of it really is that's encapsulated in there it is you know nonfiction to the fullest you know but uh you know have you ever thought about kind of you know, what you've seen, what you've experienced and, you know, going in and speaking, you know, yourself as far as the different bases and, then, you know, presenting your book. I mean, and again, because, you know, a lot of people be like, oh, it's, fucking, it's a book of fiction, but it, it still encapsulates and there's not anyone in any branch of the military that would be able to read that and be able to relate themselves to that story that's that's what makes it so great you know even though it may be a fiction book by title or by by genre it still encapsulates so much of real life to any serviceman you know especially army or the rangers and things like that to where it is a benefit to them because you know there's because even in the story you still see like fallibility that you know any of us can make and the importance of being able to recover whether you know, it'd be our uh, fellow brothers and sisters and the servicemen, things like that. And it's, again, even though it's a fictional story, we can still take that real life that, you know, is covered in that book and assert it to ourselves, our trainings, and things to look forward to. And <laughs> things to say, hey, I'm glad that wasn't me. <laughs> you know? So, yes. Um, and, I, and the funny thing is, I had that conversation with somebody else. And when they read this book, they... They said that, well, the first thing was uh, it was it captured their attention and it was so, uh, so really? interesting that they had they, they had to go to work the next day and they couldn't put it down. They were up till two in the morning reading the book because it was so uh, intense and they want they needed to know what happened next. And uh, they were late for work the next day. Uh, but it was. This this story has um, a lot of truth to it. Um, how I'm going through uh, the process to go uh, become a ranger, and then uh, the process to become uh, selected for Delta, and then going through the Delta training or CAG Combat Applications Group. Um, that it's it, everything in there was researched, and it is actual. Um, what they do now to become a, a Delta member. And the story um, of what happens to James in, in the Delta mission, it's, uh, I had another person tell me that it seemed like it may have happened in real life, um, that it it sounds very real. What was and, the, uh, I had somebody ask me the other day about the book and I was like, well, and I, you know, I encourage people to read anywhere, you know, but I told them, I said, it's not a toilet book. You know, a toilet book's like something you can just kind of like read through a chapter, put it down. I said, it's going to, you know, you don't want to just like kind of, it's not a toilet book, you know, it's something that you're going to, okay, shit, what happens next? Unless you've got one of them like, you know, constipations, you'll be sitting there for a while. But, but, so know, it's, like, it's, a toilet book. It's, a, it's a read along. It's, it's go, go, go. Yeah. So this one, it's intense and it, it's hard to put down. Um, if you look on Amazon, if anybody looks on Amazon and look at the reviews, 99% uh, of the reviews are five-star reviews. Um, everyone has really enjoyed the Delta mission. Um, the unique book is this one, The Dragon and the Eagle. This one, um, it took me a little longer to write, this, which is why it came out in December and not earlier. Um, but I put a, a reference page or a source page in the back. And the reason I did that was because I wanted everybody to see where I got the information that I, I didn't just pull it out of the air and put it in the book and it's fiction. Uh, everything that I've mentioned in there that would cause somebody to say, what is that? Or what does that mean? You can go in the back of the book 
to the source page, see where I mentioned it, and you could see where I got it from. Ooh, and it's actual factual information. A lot of people don't know that China, they're on their 14th five-year plan. <laughs> and they are, they are doing outstanding with uh, their five-year plans and, and what their overall goal is in the end um, is to become the number one uh, superpower in the world. And they are well on their way there and they're, they're getting very close. A lot of people don't understand, like, you know, it's the, you know, a lot of people just take what the media, you know, feeds and they don't kind of research themselves. And again, going, it's kind of like two part here, like the book where you're talking about the reference page of things, that's what I was saying before about, you know, it's kind of, you know, people see the genre being fiction, not realizing like all the true references that are within your books. And that's what makes it, that's the beauty of it. I was just like, well, well, yeah, the genre is fiction, but trust me, you're going to, you know, feel like it's real life when you're reading it, things like that. But, you know, like with China, you know, the, the currency is actually, I mean, people don't understand the civilian sector. I don't think they'll ever understand how many loans. I mean, China has acquired islands just because people couldn't pay them back. They're, they're very diligent on, they're so business minded, which that's all an economy is. And that's why, as you just said, they're advancing far greater and faster than any other country in the world. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people always, you always got the naysayers because they're only, you know, taking the tidbits of negativity that, you know, are being fed to them, not realizing, you know, how much we actually gain from them. I mean, realistically, you know, mm -hmm. so many, so many different countries gain from them because, you know, and that's what like the utilization of the word superpower, you know, back when the, you know, the, the collapse of the USSR and things like that to where, you know, it made the United States the only remaining superpower you know, China is really, I mean, a far, 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 like they're within inches <laughs> of that being that superpower. They really are. You know, right. You know, sometimes you got to, you know, instead of having all these different, and I mean, we have so many different allies that, you know, truth be told, people need to embrace it more than, you know, having all the negativity and the naysayers and things like that as well, too. It's and you mentioned something else. You mentioned the islands that uh, China has, and something that that was on a blip on the news is uh, the Spratly Islands. The <laughs> Chinese they built military bases. They built the islands overnight. It seems like they built them overnight, and then they built military installations on those islands, and. This is in well down south in the South China Sea. And now China's claiming that's their ocean. The South China Seas, everything um, from that nine dash line up is theirs now. Whenever we have ships that travel through the South China Sea um, by uh, freedom of navigation, uh, they get warnings by the Chinese that you are on China, you are in Chinese waters and you need to leave. Well, it's going to come. And I, and I put that in the book. I put that in here and, and that happens. That's been happening and it's going to continue to happen until they are. Not, I'm telling you, once they get their fourth carrier active and they have four carrier strike groups, okay. their warnings will not be warnings. It'll be a threat. And then they're going to carry through with it. And that's how this book starts. And it's, it's coming. It's coming. Well, well, Dubai, a lot of, a lot, I mean, read this story on Dubai. You know, a lot of people don't realize that Dubai was funded on a loan from the Chinese. I mean, it, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden when people can't start paying back, what happens? Just like if your house, if you can't pay the bank, what happens? They, they own that house, bank. you know, so. And there's a lot more to that. And like with the military bases, like you said, it's just, you know, some things are just, just because we don't know or we don't see doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, you know? And that's, yeah. I'm not going to say the scary part, but it's the thing that, you know, like if, you, if somebody scrolls through Facebook and everybody always has something crazy to say, but they don't know the facts behind it. You know what I mean? Kind of like that, the Oscar thing last night. You know, mm -hmm. the, the whole thing with Jada and stuff like that, like her disease. I mean, it's, it wasn't a roast. 
You know, people are like, oh, well, Will Smith, you know, he's doing, he shouldn't have done that. Well, if somebody says something about your mom, she had cancer, all of a sudden she's bald now, you're not going to take that as, oh, yeah, ha, ha, it's a joke. You know, this, but, you know, people see one thing and they run with it. It's the same thing right. with, you know, this discussion that you and I are having. It's the, if you, if you really care about our economy, our culture, everything as a whole, you would read up on these things. You would care about, you know, the progression of one, are we doing this together or are they doing it to oppose us? You know, right. those are important things, maybe not for us immediately, but it is definitely going to be vital and important for our children, for our families that come, generations that come, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's another beauty about your books is the fact that it's, you're educating people. And again, that's why I hate the fact that it has to be in the genre of fiction because there's so much in there that is encapsulated. You know, it's right. kind of like to be nice if we could put the genre on the side of it, like half fiction, half nonfiction, you know, it's like bibliography mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But no, it's, it's great. And I, and I love the fact that you cover that because it becomes educational. And again, going back to the aspect about me saying about, you know, you being a speaker within, you know, the different, the bases, or even, you know, going into shit, the, the VAs would be a good place for you to mm -hmm. talk and things like that. Because I mean, yeah. so many different veterans love good stories and things like that too, because it's the, we all love memories. We all, you know, like photo books and things like that. Sometimes mm -hmm. a, a story or a letter is better than any picture because it's actually spelling it out for you. And it's painting the picture for you. you know? Right. So it's, a, it's great. And some, yeah, it, I would love to go around to different military installations and even uh, VA hospitals and, and um, do book signings and discuss uh, what's in the, these books and and explain where I got the information and and how I see China expanding and becoming a world power. Uh, more powerful than the United States. Well, you know, another thing, another point that's important, and you know, what you share in that as well, too, because you don't know how many servicemen and sisters and women that I know that a lot of individuals, again, very first question I asked you about, you know, what caused you to want to enlist? Same thing like why I enlist. And a lot of times we have our our selfish means about, you know, why we join, I don't care what branch, what service that we were joining, but we have our own selfish means. But then, you know, as time progresses on and say, you know, you have you get deployed to a specific mission, it may be a cause that, you know, upon your beliefs, your culture, or anything else like that, that it's really not fitting to what you would call service. You know, so you start to question, you know, the good that's being done. Whereas if, you know, like education, like what you're saying, as far as knowing these certain things, it, it, it enhances, you know, why we continue on our service. It may actually alter the mentality that we have and may give us more drive and determination about what it is that we're doing as a service that we're providing, you know, because of knowing of what may come or, you know, what is imminent. You know, so it, it's it's vital. And again, you know how you encapsulate all that while you're educating everybody, because it's the even though this is a <clears throat> excuse me, even though this is a fictional story by genre, <laughs> it's still hey, this is real life, and this is something that you know each and every one of you in a, as a service member really need to start thinking about. You know, is for people think that you know just because I'm under command by somebody else doesn't mean that I can still be. <clears throat> you know, I'm sorry my own commander my own my own individual because you know it's even the grunts you know make that mission happen you know without our front line you know that mission mm -hmm. is not going to happen so it's just it's so I, i've so you my so i don't know I'm, i guess i'm i've already aged myself uh, i i joined the army i originally joined in uh, 86 and i have uh, this year, I think, is 37 years of service. Wow. And um, <laughs> Thank um, you, by the way. I have, I have more service time than some of the people that's in my, my squad. That's serving. Uh, <laughs> they've been alive. <laughs> I have more time in service than they've been alive. And it's kind of weird uh, 
thinking that and, and saying that. Um, but for as long as I've been in, I, I enjoy what I do. Um, I'm a team chief. Uh, I, I have a group, uh, my team that I supervise and I do their, uh, their NCOERs and, and I train them and, and I give them uh, direction. I, I'm mentoring a few of them to become uh, CID agents and to become warrant officers. And I enjoy doing that. And I think the world of them, I have an outstanding team. Uh, I, I would go anywhere with them. I'd go to Afghanistan again if, if uh, that came up. Um, they are really outstanding. And hopefully, I mean, I'm about to get promoted to CW3 next month. And I want to right, stay right. another, thank you, uh, at least another four or five, six years. How, how long is, well, speaking of that, I mean, how long has Matt that's been in? He's been in... 44, 43. So, Matthew's like 43, 44, didn't he? He's uh, trying to remember. Uh, he's retired as a four star general, if I remember correctly. And it was uh, well over 20 years. And and he wasn't retired long enough to become sec def. Uh, they had to give him a waiver uh, for him to become a sec def uh, or become sec def of the United States uh, because he wasn't retired long enough. Uh, so he, he's got an extended uh, military history. Um, he's got a, a lot of time in service. See, I think I think that's what I'm counting. Like my my 43, 44 is when he became secretary. You know, in uh, okay, yeah. I don't know. Why I was I don't know why I was getting the number 43, 44. But I, what I was going with that is the same sense that you know the long termers is what the, you know gives the encouragement because you've seen the change of tide or the change of time. You know, regardless of how you want to look at it. But you know, it. You, I mean, you've really, I mean, you've really seen the change of it all, what, 36 years? It's like, like you said. I've seen like, the uniforms change uh, about five different times. Uh, I remember when I was issued in basic training, and I was issued like four, four different uniforms after that. And and it, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Pick one and stick with it. <laughs> is that something that you're going to kind of have in the books as well, too? Are you going to eventually have, you know, the kind of a, I'm going to say like the, the real life of the changes that are experienced within the military and everything else as well? Um, I think I'm going to stick with more action thriller type books and I think that's my my genre. That's 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 what I enjoy writing, and that's what I'm going to stick with. Uh, will it come up in one of my books? It might, but we'll see. Uh, and it's the because people don't realize like how that affects things though too. You know, it affects mentality. Sometimes it will affect camaraderie. There's so many different things that you know play into those factors. The the kind of here and now that kind of distracts you from the overall picture. You know. People start focusing on the wrong shit, you know, rather than focusing on the mission here and now and getting it done, you know. Right. So, and it's and especially as you know, times are changing, cultures changing, you know. So is our military, you know. I don't, I don't even want to. I'm not going to turn this into a whole political bashing as far as the, you know, the, how many different servicemen and women, you know, have been ousted just from refusing on different, you know, standing their grounds and things. But anyway, but. <clears throat> You know, that's when yeah, that, that, it's <laughs> that was kind of, I, I never thought I would see that. No, um, it's, I think everyone should have freedom of choice. Um, I mean, that's why it's we, what we, fight, it's what we fight for. It's what we, the military is for. And until the same servicemen and women that are earning these freedoms of choice, that, hey, guess what? Because you're making a choice, you're ousted. It, it's, right. it boggles me. It really does. So yeah, that that kind of surprised me too. With thirty-seven years of service, um, 
I never thought I would see that, but it happens. You're, you're going to take away what I fight for. <laughs> Pretty you much. Think, you, think, you think it was a comedy storybook at that time, you know? But anyway, so. But so, I wanted to mention uh, uh, something else about uh, this, uh, the dragon and the eagle. Um, it just came out this past December, and uh, I've already spoken to a few people that read it, and they were, um, I, I wanted to mention that they were very surprised on everything that I mentioned and how I put everything together in this book and how I talk about what China's doing with their thousand talents program, how they're stealing technology from the United States, um, unclassified and some classified information and taking it back to China. And the Chinese are outstanding at reverse engineering anything. And a lot of people don't know that they came out with 5G before we did. Mm -hmm. Now that we have 5G, they're about to come out with 6G. They, they, they are, um, they would take anything that we have, reverse engineer it, and make it better. And that's what's interesting here. And they are, like I said before, they're catching up and they're going to surpass us. And I even mentioned in the book, right around 2025 to 2030. And that's the magic five years there. Um, China's already building their um, their most sophisticated aircraft carrier, and it looks just like just like our Ford class carriers here in the United States. It looks well, just like it is. is it's five feet shorter, but that's it. Yeah, but see, the, the scary part about with all of that is the fact of how. And you want to talk about the technology, how far advanced their AI is. And the AI is like the important part that's kind of like, I'm not going to say it's overlooked because everybody knows that the AI is there. But China, and like you just said, you know, the reverse, and anybody that doesn't know what rever reverse engineering is, it's that even though this microphone right here was created, I just sit here and take it apart, see how it's designed, look at the chips, look at the components and everything else. And then I just re engineer and build everything back up. But like with their AI, I mean, they have robots that you would swear on your mother that it was a human being, mm -hmm. you know, and with, you know, these carriers and the AI that's being built into their military surveillance and everything else, it's, it's scary. It really, I mean, it's, there's no other word for it. It really is. I mean, because it's the, you know, when you, when you have a battleship or anything of a war component that can think for itself, respond for itself, that's, that's scary. I don't, I don't care what planet mm -hmm. you live on. <laughs> And that's and something else that that's should be catching people's attention is uh, and and I even put it in the book. I even mentioned uh, China has hypersonic missiles, and so does Russia, and they both coordinated with each other for in research to develop hypersonic missiles. The United States does not have hypersonic missiles. And two, we do not have the capability to defend ourselves against hypersonic missiles. And I'm getting a lot of information. Uh, the Pentagon is really um, moving quickly to develop hypersonic missiles. And they're moving quickly uh, and they're, they're pouring a lot of money into it to develop uh, the capabilities of detecting and intercepting hypersonic missiles. Well, with you, being, with, you being, with you being in the military for 37 years, I just want to make sure I have my facts right. So yeah, with you being in 37 years, you were probably in during the beginning of the Star Wars program when Reagan and them actually had where we, like the satellite was supposed to be able to detect any kind of airborne missiles that you know were coming towards any right. like that. And but like you just said, you know, with these with these sonic missiles, it's 
what are you going to do? You know, so now, you, and again, it's like the, that's like with law enforcement. Do you know how many different anti-suspect equipment have been created by a criminal themselves? The stops, the, I mean, mm -hmm. everything. But it's like, and it's in that reverse engineering of knowing how one works to be able to defend against. You know, it's the whole, you know, the Star Wars satellite and things like that, with Tesla and all that. It's just the stories behind that. And that was because of war, you know, and like mm -hmm. all those predated times. But, uh, you know, it's it's something that, you know, being aware, it's like, oh, well, hey, we know. But, you know, when's knowing too late? You know, it's, well, you've had these warnings for, you know, months, years. You've known that they were building this for months, years. Why would you not be, you know, kind of in the know or... Right be more diligent in finding out so that we could have, you know, the proper defense and things like that as well, too. You know, so. so you mentioned the Star Wars program and from the Star Wars program, uh, the Pentagon came up with uh, MDA, the Missile Defense Agency. And we are perfectly set up to uh, track, uh, we can detect a launch, an ICBM launch, and we can track that ICBM and we are able to intercept it. And we have that down, we, we have that. But now with hypersonic missiles, they don't travel the same as ICBMs and they travel much, much faster. And so they are much harder to track and now they're trying to play catch up and this catch up is going to take years it's going to be years to be able to be able to defend against their hypersonic missiles um, but what's going to happen between now and those years and, and when we are able to uh, stop those uh, hypersonic missiles what's going to happen i mean what could happen yes, uh... You know, another thing, too, is kind of, you know, going back, I'll never quit talking about how your book should be in the nonfiction section rather than the fiction section. But, you know, you, you kind of like look back in the times like Gene Roddenberry with Star Trek and everything else. And it's like how far advanced like they had certain things, cell phones, you know, lasers and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. it's the same sense, too, to where, you know, it's, it's kind of a shame that if somebody picks up your book and they see, you know, the genre because it's deemed the fiction. Like, oh, OK, hey. It seems like make believe, but how much reality is like, hey, this shit exists, and this is how much more it's going to be advancing. I mean, and you even give the preeminent as far as the, hey, this is where we are now, hey, this is what they're looking to do, and then you know maybe here in the the next storylines, it'll be at that point to where hey, it's there and kind of given a, a summation summation of what you know would be if or once that's reached. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I encourage. I encourage anyone, everyone that that's watching this, listening to this podcast, to get the dragon and the eagle, get read the book. the book, and make their own decision on what they think. And I would love to know their opinion. And I have my contact information on the back of both of my books. So anyone can reach out and, and tell me what they think. But I would really want to know what people think about this book. I would love to get their opinions. Hey, and you're TonyPerez.com. There's, there's, I mean, there's comments. TonyPerezBooks.com. Yeah, Tony, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, TonyPerezBooks.com. There's comment sections on there as well, too. And it's, it's a perfect spot for individuals to leave comments. Because not only can they just leave a comment, you know, based on one book. Because, you know, obviously, we discussed, you know, you're going to have, you know, it's an ongoing series. So you have others that come out. So... You know, whether it be you know, the Delta mission or the Dragon and the Evil, that, you know, individuals can go in there and make their comments because, you know, their comments can kind of add into to where, you know, James Chase answers that, you know, specific question or that, that mm -hmm. input in that next novel. So, you know, it's always good for feedback. And I encourage that, too. And I'm, I'm going to have, you know, I'll have the, the 20 pressbooks.com site up. I'm going to have direct links, you know, whether it be the Amazon or whether it be the um, – this Google, Amazon Google, is fine. Google reads, yeah, Google Books at Reads has it as well too. They have a they have a link for it as well too. And I just want to provide the different links where you know individuals be able to you know get your book 
And then I'll keep everybody updated as well, too. You know, all those that are subscribed, everything else, too. I'll send emails out as soon as I see that, you know, you're posting about, you know, you're going to be doing a book signing and things like that. I know, you know, it's kind of spur of the moment type things, you know, because of your busy schedule and everything else, too. But, you know, it's a blessing that, you know, you do make yourself available and, you know, provide mm -hmm. the the one-on-ones and the direct contact to them because it's going to be that as well too that kind of answers those questions that those questions and allows individuals to kind of ask you questions mm -hmm. or kind of give you insight like oh the, the reason i didn't want this one is i read the delta mission was phenomenal you know and it's yeah just I, I just i just did a book signing uh this past weekend in uh coco village and i'm doing another one uh this coming weekend saturday again in the same same uh coco village at uh, hello again books and i usually get a pretty decent crowd and i can't wait to answer questions on this one um it's it's going to be interesting it's going to be interesting because so far people that have reached out to me uh they have told me they they can see this happening they can see it happening Wait, so you said this Saturday? Yes, uh, this Saturday. Um, uh, I'm not sure exactly what time. I think it's right around noon time uh, in Coco Village, and it's uh, Hello Again Books. It's a nice little store, uh, bookstore, in. Uh, in old historic Coco Village, and I know the the owner, and she's a really nice lady, and she's invited me over um, this coming weekend, Saturday. Pretty sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure Saturday's the second. <laughs> I think you're right. Let's see. Yes, you are. You, you got it right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But no, it's, it's phenomenal. You know, and, and that's a blessing, though, too. You know, a lot of people kind of take it for granted that, you know, an author or anybody, you know, not only took out of their time to write the book. Yeah, it's, you make your profits on it and stuff like that. But, I mean, that's deserved. You know, but being able to take time out of it and people go, like, oh, what's a, you know, they're still earning for, you know, getting, but it's the, you don't have to do that. You know, you can just rely on online book sales or, you know, someone else promoting your book or somebody just walking by and having to pick it up. But, you know, you're taking the time out of your day to be able to, you know, share that experience with any of the avid readers or the followers of the actual the series and the novel. You know, it's, it's, it's a blessing for individuals, you know, and especially how knowledgeable books so I really can't even find another word for it like I said like I said I've probably said it 15 times during this broadcast that you know it's amazing that it actually has to be placed in the genre of it being you know a not a a fiction rather than a non-fiction genre you know it's the it's a, it's a beautiful it's beautifully written it's you know and so I, I, want, <laughs> I enjoy going doing the book signings and and I enjoy uh people asking questions and, and they're curious. People are naturally curious and they want to ask me uh, questions about this book and, and what I put in here and, and where I got the information and, and I am more than happy to explain and answer their questions and I enjoy it. I, I really do. And some people go. really like to get the autographed books and I, of course I do that too. Well, one of the, uh, one of the questions I have, do you ever see it in the film? Um, I had a friend of mine, he's got a, his son works in California and he sent it to his son. He, he works in the film industry. Um, so I don't know. I, I could see, I, actually, I could see both books, uh, especially this one. I could see the Delta mission, uh, being a movie, uh, because it's a, it's a high octane book. Um, the way I wrote that, uh, it starts out where I give I give um, the readers uh, the background, 
And then when they go on the mission, that it hits a high point when they go on the mission. And then it stays on a high point from the mission all the way to the end of the book. Yeah, and that's so my friend where he was reading it until two in the morning and was late for work the next day because he needed to know what happened. That's why I'm asking about it, you know, being a book. Is it just like with any of these other, you know, you see the successful, you know, TV movies that have the, the ongoing series, you know, it's like, like Jason Bourne, you know, it's the, anybody that you see the movie, but you don't even realize that it used to be a book, but they already had all the novels written, you know, beforehand. So it's like, okay, Hey, how's this going to capture somebody? Mm -hmm. Like you said, even if you started it with the Delta mission and then, you know, Dragon and the Eagle and it actually having that, I mean, it's, it's, it's film worthy. It's, it definitely is, you know, and you know, whether it be short film or the actual movie series, you know, it's mm -hmm. just like, well, shit, look at the London has fallen. Olympus has fallen, you know, mm -hmm. angel has fallen on that whole little series and things like that. Yep. It's and especially yep. military movies. Military movies are always, you know, top box office, you know, yeah, so. usually they're blockbusters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I can see, I can see this one and this one both, being blockbusters, um, both both blockbusters in their own unique way. This one because of what happens to James and everything he goes through, and then this one because I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. You know, another thing too that's the beauty behind it too is again going back to the author of those books yourself, <laughs> having that 37 year career. You know, because then you know as the storylines go on. You know, being able to have, you know, those flashback moments, per se, that, you know, everything that's been seen, you know, throughout. So it's I look forward to the next one coming out and I, I really would love to see it in, in film. I mean, it, it really is film worthy. If I could sell a lot of books, then I could. Um retire from my civilian job i'll still do the reserves and the army stuff and i'll i can spend more time writing and that would be ideal that would hey, be ideal that comment alone was commendable you know that i mean not, not many i mean you got 37 years in that's pretty you know commendable itself and you know pretty like selfless you know but you know to be able to sit there and say hey even if it does make it big i'm still gonna you know serve i mean that that oh, itself yeah. you know just kind of paints a picture of the individual you are and why it's so important for individuals to share in your stories, you know, regardless if the genre has to be titled fiction. <laughs> you know, yeah, so. Definitely. I, I, I can't leave my team. I can't leave my unit. Um, I, I love those guys, guys and girls. And, and I think they really like me being there and, and mentoring them. And it's, it's, they're, they're a great group. I, I can't, I don't have any complaints. Well, you say essentially they're parts of the book. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know? that's another thing. Um, I, I actually used some of their names in this book and a lot of their names in this book. So when they got the book, they were like, oh, that's me. That's me. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, wait till it's on film. Then all of a sudden, they sit around there, you know, they'll be at the theater for the popcorn. I ask, hey, here, my part's coming up. My part's coming up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does make it nice though i mean because then it's just like i mean again going back to the the realism that's within the that you capture on those pages you know it's it's amazing it really is yeah it's it, i i think uh, my opinion uh they're both great books um but don't go on my opinion alone i always tell people go on amazon look at the reviews and you can see that both books have five star reviews and it, it's that that speaks for itself that other people think that these books are really good books well pretty pretty soon that that vitae that you have of that long list of accomplishments and service that you've done pretty soon you'll be able to you know squeeze in next to that author actor <laughs> <laughs> right oh, <laughs> do, we'll a cameo do, do a cameo appearance in each one of the films <laughs> you know, I, I, I was just uh, watching the Lee Childs and uh, Jack Reacher, okay, yeah. and the very last episode, I got to see Lee Childs uh, walking out of the restaurant, and I was like, that was pretty cool. I like that. Yes, yeah, it was one of the things that they talked up because 
So, like, what was his first book? Was it Killing Floor, his first book? I, th- I, th- I think Killing Floor was his first book. I might, I might be wrong, but, you know, and he made an innuendo when they were first talking about that, you know, because the big joke is, like, you know, anybody that follows, like, Jack Reacher, he's supposed to be, like, a, a big, you know, badass kind of guy and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, when they, when they cast it, Tom Cruise, and he's, like, you know, knee-high to a grasshopper. It's like, so yeah, like, wear the boots and everything else, too. But, you know, it's the... It's, it's, that's a, that's actually a great storyline. It's funny you said that too, because you know, again, going with this James Chase, it's it's gonna get there. Well, funny thing is, is, they're both CID agents. That's the I was about to say. It's gonna it's gonna get there. You know, the storylines are. You know, I'm not gonna say they're the same. You know, they're, like I said, they're complete contrast, but in the same sense, the way yeah, the it's, way that they're, they're it's completely different. Grab you, but but they, they they're completely different. But the way that they grab you, same thing with like Lee Child. I'm pretty sure I keep wanting to say Killing Floor is the first one, but Needless to say, you know, just as those books and his storylines, you know, capture somebody to worst, oh, shit, what's happening next? Again, it's not a toilet book. You know, you're going to want to read and find out at one point, oh, okay, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? You know, and, you know, as the chapters go on, because of it capturing, you know, still the same scene, but something different that's adding into it, you know, so you can have five storylines, but it's still all about that same plot, that same how to do it you can say like chapter one a b c d and e is what i guess i'm trying to say shit right. <laughs> but but no it's it's great you know so it's i got a couple of people too i'm going to kind of pass the book on to i'm going to order a copy and have a sense of them directly and you know one one of the guys is this thing's really not like movies movies but he does like the biographies and uh short films all that other stuff too but you know, like he, he deals with like law enforcement, you know, their story and you know what they deal with too. James Harney, you know, he's produced, we did like the Wounded Blue and stuff like that too. But you know, you give him the right storyline, I'm sure that you know he'll, he'll run with it if he sees the value in it and stuff like that as far as you know getting the message because there is a message in all this too. It's an educational aspect, plus you know, showing real life as far as what individuals, you know, may see. That's like what is it, like maybe I think the most five percent of servicemen and women actually see combat you know so it's like you know people that say oh yeah i was i was here there and everywhere but it's like did you see combat you know right. and it's like there's so many different storylines that people don't know it's you know we go somewhere to build you know hospitals and schools that's a kringle mm-hmm. valley you know the kringle valley no country in the history of the world has ever conquered the kringle valley you know it's the we lost that war but nobody talks about it nobody thinks about it it's the we, we got our little schools and everything else built, but it's it's a bloodbath. You know, it's a scary thing like that when you think about it. But it's like, you know, an untold, you know, storyline. Just like that big famous picture where we're standing up the flag. It's, well, we lost that war. You know, it's really nothing to, I'm not going to say there's nothing to celebrate. We have to celebrate anything that, you know, our brothers and sisters lost their lives for. But, you know, people like think, oh, it's a day of celebration. That was no day of celebration. Trust me. Yeah, they're, well, they're... You, and you, you know, it's, it's, crazy to think that we've been in Afghanistan for 20 years. We were there for 20 years and we pull out all U.S. forces and within a week, it's gone. Everything we put into it, Shambles. all the time and effort, the blood, the, the, the dead soldiers, 20 years and all of that, we lost it in a week. Not even that, really. I mean, because it was soon as, I mean, our planes were de- taken off out of there. It was being lost. It, it's, it's, I don't even like talking about shit like that. That's crazy, though. You know, a lot of people don't realize that, though. Like, people think that the Afghan war lasted, you know, four, eight years. Like you just said, I mean, we've been there for 20 years, you know, and it's just, <laughs> you blink an eye, all of a sudden, everything you just did was completely. Well, you, you know, look at, look at, uh, if you make a comparison, between Afghanistan and um, Ukraine. Uh, Afghanistan, the president, he got on a plane and left immediately. He left that country and left his people. Um, Then you look at Ukraine, the president stayed and decided to put on uh, his military stuff his military gear and decided to fight and 
that shows that's a big difference between the two and it shows a lot yeah and especially when you look at head of state you know it's like the leaders you know kind of going back to the whole mathis aspect of things you know it's the he was the pit bull of any military commander that we had any general we had you know he was literally a ravaged dog <laughs> you know a smart one you know but uh, how, how many how many of our heads or how many of the people pointing the fingers or commanding us to do certain things are going to go on that front line with us or when they see things you know crumbling apart still standing with you you know and that that defines it defines the country as a whole in essence really you know what i mean because you're only going to be as strong again as the leaders or the people that you know you surround yourself with so it's very right. commendable and things like that as well too and you know i can all i can do is just pray that you know our leaders would do the same for us in times of the, you know times of the same you know so and it's, i mean you got to think about the history as well too that nato in the history of its existence has never deployed soldiers to assist in one's fighting and things like that too so that's another you know huge storyline that people don't know about and things too so that's yeah. why your storylines are so great you can you can put some things in there or maybe a story but hey you know the reality is in there with it you know so yep exactly the right. the <laughs> there we go yep. but uh you know tony it was a it's a blessing i'd love to have another show with you as well too i might okay on the Coco village and do a live show at the book signing okay i'll, I'll, I'll be there Saturday. so I'll, I'm, I'm gonna try to because i got multiple microphones and cameras we can both just kind of have things and kind of you know, talk to the different I almost said movie goers soon <laughs> keep your fingers crossed uh, it's the you know, I, I'd love to see it happen I mean it really is that good it really is you know it's everybody listening things like that I encourage you you know if somebody can't afford it just reach out to me you guys know that you know I'll, I'll send it out to you and things like that just so you do have the opportunity to read this and you know here in a few years like this I don't, I don't mean to uh, push that time frame on it. Here soon, be able to see it in film. <laughs> but, uh, you know, actually be able to follow the series because you should have another one coming out of all that as well, too. I'll have uh, Mr. Perez's information on in the post. Everybody that follows, I'll send out the emails as well, too, that uh, you guys will be able to, you know, get the Delta Vision, also get the Dragon and the Eagle, and then, you know, kind of stay in touch for, if you just go to the TonyPerezBooks.com, you know, you'd be able to see for yourself firsthand, you know, when the next uh, series, of, next novel in this series, excuse me, I'm sorry, next novel in this series, you know, will be released and things like that too. And, and as, you know, Mr. Perez expressed, he'd love to have your feedback on, you know, your reading of the Delta Mission and the Dragon and the Eagle. You know, because the more insight that, you know, we as the readers or the viewers provide him, the more that he can actually put into his books and things like that to kind of, you know, encapsulate all of us as an audience and stuff as well, too, while maintaining the integrity and truth that, you know, he's providing us the knowledge of, so. Yep. Again, I appreciate everything, and thank you. Always. Is there anything you want to, uh, any kind of news or any kind of links or anything like that you want to direct the audience to or anything, or? Uh, you mentioned you mentioned them all. Uh, Tony Perez books. Uh, if anybody wants an autographed book, um, I have a website where I autograph these books and I send them out. Um, if uh, there's people that prefer to get them from Amazon, Amazon, look up Tony Perez or the names of the books, The Dragon and the Eagle and The Delta Mission. Uh, they should pop right up and check them out and get them there. Put this across right now. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to type up this new banner real quick. And again, I would love to get people's uh, uh, questions or comments about the books. Um, so far, uh, everyone that I've uh, received messages from they've really enjoyed both books um this one the delta mission they really loved the uh Intensity. thriller uh action portion of the book um i even had a, a message from one person that said that 
it it seemed real life. It seemed like it it happened. Um, it's nothing where James Chase is a superhero and saves the day. Uh, he's a regular person. Uh, he's highly trained, but he's still a regular person. And, and he's like getting shot five times people. without slowing down. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it's it's good. And then the and like I said, this one this one just came out in December, so I didn't get a lot of feedback yet. But the feedback that I did get, uh, it was uh, they said that, especially the military people, they said that they could see this happening in the very near future. Uh, I gave the time frame in the book at, as 2025, um, but it'll be when China has, and I can see it when they have four active carrier uh, carrier strike groups. Uh, that's when they will uh, enforce their their will, and we're going to send we're going to send ships, uh, freedom of navigation through the South China Seas, and China is going to be not this time, and that's all it'll take is one hypersonic missile. Uh, it'll take out the ship, and well, that's when it starts. Something we don't want to think about, but you know that's one of the things too. We we try to we try to bury or bottle up certain thoughts or realities that we really do need to start paying attention to and things like that. And you know, you say in the twenty twenty five, you'll be uh, we'll have to come out with uh, the Nostra Perez. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> think about predictions it. like remember remember uh, history books um, where Russia was putting missiles in Cuba. Yeah. And what the United States did, uh, we were going to go to war. JFK. That's not going to happen. You're not going to put missiles. And it, it was in Cuba. It's not U.S. territory, but it was in Cuba. And we were sending our uh, naval fleets down there. And it was going to go south quick. That's like it's the same thing here. It's the same thing here. China does not want us in their, in their oceans or what they're claiming, the South China Seas, they do not want us there. And when they're ready, when they are ready to defend themselves, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. I'm telling and, you. And, and not even just defend themselves. I mean, because when it reaches that, it's kind of like when you look at the gradual advancements, so it's like growing up, you know, like even today, if I can find, you know, the right friends and things like that, I love the game risk. You know, in other words, that, that the strategies and the planning, but it's not the, you're just taking over the world immediately. It's that, pushing forward slowly, pushing forward slowly and things like that. And it's the, it may be for defense right now, but what's, you know, once you reach so far out and you get into, Hey, I can go on the offense now, you know, that's where it goes. And like, you know, speaking of all of that with like Russia, I don't, I don't think the civilian sector, even people that kind of, they might've seen a history book, but kind of ignored the geography of everything. Many people don't realize that you can see Russia from Alaska. Not on a map, I'm talking about physically, geographically. You can see Russia and vice versa. And it's, I mean, our pipelines, there's so much there that, you know, civilian sector really doesn't pay attention to because it seems like a, a fantasy or a far-fetched story and things like that to where, you know, it's, we need to pay attention to these things. We need to pay attention. And to that's, that's something else that people don't realize. And it doesn't make the news very often. Um, Russia will send planes over from Russian airspace towards Alaska, and we um, would detect the, the flights, and we would send our planes up to intercept and give them a warning to go back that they're uh, encroaching onto U.S. airspace. But what's going to happen? And like they do that. The hypersonics, though. You know what I mean? That's the scary part. Because if they're smart enough to be flying in and have that hypersonic, I mean, how soon so, too late? <laughs> so that, that's, I mean, if it was a hypersonic missile coming in, I mean, there would be very little warning. That's what I'm saying. Um, it would only take a few minutes for that missile to hit uh, whatever target it was it was aimed at. Um, it's, I don't know, it, it's scary. Sure. Well, I enjoyed it. I hope uh, 
I appreciate it. Y'all, I'm going to send you over the link as well, too, to the Truth website, because I always put all the different podcasts once I upload everything, get the things on, because I have, uh, obviously, we have the video uh, source of this, also have the audio source of it. I can send you, like, the embed code. That way, if you want to put this broadcast onto your site or anything like that, you actually have the embed code to where, you know, people can kind of listen to, you know, our broadcast and stuff like that as well, too, so they can hear the story behind the books and things like that, and I'll promote it out as well, too, and I'll send the different links for individuals to be able to, you know, purchase the books, share it with their friends, and also, you know, individuals on the military bases, you know, it's the... I'll be down in Tampa, the National Guard down there in Tampa, and stuff like that, and kind of share the story as well, too. So we're up there, rather. But, so, but it's all right. Well, I appreciate that. Better. Always, I, I appreciate you. I mean, thank you for your service. Thank you for what you continue to do. Thank you for sharing the stories with us. To kind of, you know, individuals that really never served, you can kind of get that feeling of serving by reading the books and things like that, too. So it's beautiful. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for your service, law enforcement. Thank you for your service to the country and. Your dedication and continue to do so regardless of you becoming rich and famous <laughs> i appreciate it <laughs> i appreciate it stay 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 safe and stay blessed and all things brother thanks you too take all care right. you too